Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Built for the Stage podcast. This is Joe Roscoe, founder and host of Built for the Stage, Broadway's number one fitness platform with clients at over 20 Broadway shows and other stages across the world. We are your one-stop shop for all things theater and fitness. It's my goal to establish a bridge between the theater community and a pursuit in training like the athlete that you are. Actors are athletes, so train like one. If you want, go to the website, billfitstage.com, and we can do a one-week free trial together where you will check out a Broadway client fitness program, and we'll work on an interactive fitness app. All right, enough. Let's get on to our special guest today. Special guest, as always, I was just in London around three weeks or so ago, and the last was the last. I think the last show, my 13th show that I saw was Anne Juliet. And uh, I was connected through Danny Kana, a new friend of mine, a photographer, uh, with an actor to be in our Bill for the Stage photo shoot over there. And this actor is seen frequently on the stage as Romeo in uh, the production in the West End of Anne Juliet. Also has been seen as Fiero and Wicked um, and just has been seen because he's awesome. He's talented. He's very kind. Uh, let's bring him on. Please welcome to the podcast, Carl Mann. Hi, Carl. Hi, Jerry. Good to see you again. So good to see you from across the pond. I wish we were yeah. side by side, but I guess technology is going to make it as best, best as we can do here. Yeah, absolutely. Love your sweatshirt. Where can I get one? Built, built for the stage. I'm sure it's available on the website, um, on the Instagram. That one, that one was limited edition. You are, those are extinct. That's that's all. Can I tell you, I wear this, I wear this like every day. It's so comfortable. I'm not trying to sell them here, but it's so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> the fabric is so soft. I literally wear it every day. So thank you for this gift. I love it. Yeah, more to come, more to come. I'm actually mm-hmm. chatting with, uh, you're familiar with Theater Cafe, the sure, yeah, mm-hmm. theater themed cafe by I think Notes Coffee Shop and that the Opera House over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, been chatting with them, and they're helping me with a distributor in the UK, so I can ship all my apparel directly from there, so it can get to you quicker and more frequently. So, more to come for you. Uh, we got some strong, it's called stronger than before. It's from Casey Garvin. Mm. He's a bill for the stage, uh, member, longtime mm. friend. He's in uh, some like it hot right now. So I'll send you some stronger than before stuff. soon. I would love it. The fabric is really, really, really comfortable. Yeah. It's really good fabric. We try to, we try to do it. We try to do it right. We try to do it right. Like you do all the time on stage. I saw you as Romeo. You were phenomenal. You did. Oh- it was my birthday, I think. Was it my birthday? Or the day before mm-hmm. my birthday? I don't it think it was. Been... It might have been around it, but I don't think it was your yeah. birthday day. Okay. But it was Actually, around that day. I think it was before it because when I followed up with you on the Insta, I think I remember saying like, oh, holy crap, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you saw me as Romeo, which was amazing. I'm so glad that you were able to catch it because obviously I don't play it every day. I play yeah. it like, you know, every few weeks or something. So it was really cool that you got to see it. So, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't my intentional first question, but let's just throw that out there. Since you're not always on, mm-hmm. how how do you like stay in a flow or a groove when it seemingly it's like you start and you stop, you start and you stop? You know, how do you find your rhythm when you're not on every night? Right. Um, I, um, well, I have an ensemble track as well. So I'm in the show every day anyway, but obviously I'm not singing as, as much as like when I play Romeo. So I guess the show, um, just being in the show every day keeps me focused. If I have a week off, like a vacation and I go back to the show, I, I, it takes me like a show to get kind of back into the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So since you're in the ensemble, you're, you're not necessarily playing the role, but it's still like subconsciously in your ear the entire time. So it's still kind of living, yeah. Living, yeah. Yeah. Living in your brain a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your favorite song to sing? I, I told you that I was 
an NSYNC person at heart. Uh, mm -hmm. and there's a lot, a lot more Backstreet Boys in there. What's your favorite song that you get to sing? My favorite song, actually, as Romeo, my favorite song that I sing is um, Love Me Like You Do, okay. which is which is uh, originally by Ellie Goulding. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, every song in the show is written by Max Martin, who is like a complete genius. So that's a like, I feel like that's a little less known song that he's written because um, mm -hmm. everyone knows like, oops, I did it again. And all these kinds of huge Britney songs. Wait, so wait, clarify this for the ignorant listeners, a.k.a. me. This uh, writer, all the songs that are covered are written by the same person? So every song, yeah, exactly. Every song in Anne Juliet is written by Max Martin, um, who, if you just literally Google his name, like the catalog of songs he's written is like, it's, I don't know another songwriter that's written the song, the amount of songs. Obviously he collaborates, it's, you know, Max Martin plus like some other writer, but he's yeah. written or produced every single song from like Britney Spears, Katy Perry, Ariana Grande, like his catalog is insane. And and every time I've met him, he's just this most down to earth guy that I'm like, your mind is like, I don't know how you have that in your mind. So he's the mastermind behind all of these mm -hmm. pop, pop hits. Yeah, I think that? on Broadway, they're billing him as like the, the Shakespeare of pop. You know what I mean? Like he literally is very, you know, very fitting. Yeah. Very fitting. Uh, speaking of, there's a lot of buzz going around in America because Anne mm -hmm. Juliet is getting on its feet over here. So that's been mm -hmm. really exciting. And I feel like I'm a part of like a special club because when I go see mm -hmm. that, I'll have gotten to say that I saw both productions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. So let's we'll jump into the show a bit more and jump into you as a person highlight you but let's shake it loose a bit and go straight into something that we like to call the bfts hot seat all right does it sound okay. intimidating? oh my goodness i didn't tell you about the hot seat did i here we go Let's see the music I don't, i'm excited all right Welcome to the BFTS Hot Seat with Carl Mann. <laughs> All right, Carl, here we go. This is question number one. You're walking into a room, the TV's on, and a movie's playing. And the mm -hmm. same movie that's playing you have seen over 100 times. But no matter what, this movie stops you and you have to watch the movie. What is this movie? Clueless. <laughs> yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I'd be like, yes. Okay. Amazing. Good. One for mm -hmm. one. Great. Quick answer. Awesome. All right. We get to see your music playlist. Three different categories. We'll start with category mm -hmm. one. Category one is our uh, commuting song. So either you're in the mm -hmm. tube or you're walking down the street. You're on your way to the theater or the market, wherever. What's that song? Ooh. Oh God! Um, uh, probably like something, uh, Lady Gaga. Okay, Lady Gaga. <laughs> right. Any, any, anyone that pops to mind? Rain on me. Okay, rain on me. Perfect. All right. Yeah, yeah. We'll go with it. All right. You're at home, and you're either like slowly starting your day, or you're mm -hmm. unwinding at night. What is that like chill vibes song that's always on repeat? Oh gosh, I don't know about song, but I have like a playlist. It's like late, late at night work, and it's very like chill vibes. There's no singing on it. It's just like kind of vibey, like yeah. low House, beats. Techno, jazz. What is it? It's uh, I would describe it as like if you're going to like a really cool hotel, and it's like what well, they're playing in like the in the, like the lounge when you walk in. Do you know what I mean? Like yes. very like mellow, very mellow. Okay, got it. All but right, it's got a beat. One... It's got a little beat. All right, last one. You want to turn up? Maybe you're like at the gym or you're feeling like groggy before the show and you want to get just amped up what's that song i should have said my first answer for this one because it would be rain on me oh, but okay, if, if i had to pick if i had to pick another one maybe like work bitch by Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> okay great okay you're uh reincarnated you're coming back to earth as an animal what mm -hmm. animal are you coming back as um like an eagle because i would love to fly Okay, an eagle. Mm -hmm. Where where would the first place you would fly to? Where would you go? Where would I fly? Um, maybe like over Buckingham Palace, see what they're doing over there. 
Okay. Spot, spot. <laughs> Fly on them over there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last one. Um, the last question is, is this left me? Oh, yes. The last question. If you weren't on a stage performing, what would you be doing as your career? If I weren't performing? Um, yeah. um, can I still be in the arts? In the... Yeah. Let's see how close it is. Uh, maybe casting if I if I wasn't an actor maybe casting would be really cool because I always think I watch like a show and I think oh that I know another actor that would be so great for that show or, you know what I mean yeah okay. definitely that all right cool congratulations you are off of the BFTS hot seat way to go <sighs> that's hot everyone make sure that uh I just brought it back up on the screen that you're following Carl Mann official on the insta you can also mm -hmm. check out more on Carl uh, in the description of this episode. So just scroll on down if you haven't subscribed and rated and done all the things. All right, Carl, when once upon a time in your past, were you like, mm -hmm. oh, I like this singing, dancing, acting thing? When did this happen? Um, I was like six years old and my grandma took me to see Oliver. Do you know that musical? It's like a very old, of uh, there's, loads of, there's loads of kids in it. And I remember seeing like all these kids on stage and I was just like, I said to her, I was like, how do they get that job? And she was like, it's worked really hard. And, and then they, they get there. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do it. Yeah. This is uh, the, please, sir, I want some more, Oliver. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure I, I, I'm pretty sure I went to uh, like one of, one of the like school field trips when you go see a play. I'm pretty sure it was Oliver. I think that was mm -hmm. one. All right. So your grandma, you said. Mm -hmm. Bless her. She took, yeah. Okay, so then what? What happened after that? Did you get into like classes? Did you go to some type of, what happened? Yeah, I went to like a local like dance school and, and did like, you know, dance classes and, and drama classes. And they did local theater. I guess you would call it community theater in America. Yeah. That's so it. I would do that. I But I was like doing the kid stuff. Like I, would, I was in like The Sound of Music and like The King and I and all that kind of stuff. And I did a production of Oliver as well. Um, and then, I was doing a lot of competitions and things like that. Um, and then I didn't go the route of like going to like a drama school or a college. Um, I left school at 18 and then I just, my first gig was actually for a cruise ship. I auditioned for, to be a, a singer on a cruise ship and I got it, um, which is like, I was 18. I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna do that. And then I just progressed from there and, and never looked back. <laughs> so your school was the school of hard knocks, which was life, just going through life and learning from the actual business, which, yeah, what better way to learn than to be doing as you're learning? Any mm. like experiences where, you know, you were learning on the fly and you can remember a person or a situation that really like helped you grow? Mm. Well, I would say, um, actually, so I, I spent some, a few years in New York actually. Um, and I took some classes at um, an acting studio there. Um, and that really kicked everything up a notch for me. It was like, oh, okay, this is what I need to be doing. And I really, it really opened my mind about, about acting. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. All right. When did you when did you go back to the states? I saw it in your bio, Aladdin in Disney's Aladdin USA. What's that all about? Mm -hmm. So I actually did a few years ago. There was a show. It ran for a long time actually, but I only did it for like six months. It was a production of Aladdin in Disneyland in California. Right. Okay. Cool. I don't know. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Um, I think Frozen took over. I think it might close now. But um, yeah. So I was I was in there in Anaheim for like six months living my best life as Aladdin. In yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna ask, in California, are you a fan? Was I a fan of California? Yeah. Uh, I'm like a city guy. Like I like New York, London. I like to walk around and get your coffee and walk your dog and New York, um, LA, sort of California was very like, get in your car, go to work, go back. It wasn't really a vibe for me, but I do miss the weather. <laughs> and sit, sit in traffic for way too long. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before this, before Anne Juliet, what mm -hmm. was your what was your what was the last show you're in? I'm trying to get a time. I was wicked. I did wicked for um 
I was attached to the show for four years, but like in between that is like COVID. So I was a year and a half of that. I was not doing the show, but yeah, Wicked was a big part of my life before and Juliet. Yeah. So you, you step into an iconic show like that. Were, did you feel the same amount of freedom as like maybe a newer show like and Juliet, or did you have any pressure of like, Oh, this is wicked. I got to check the boxes of like what everyone expects out of wicked in this role, Fiera. Yeah, very much that. And very much like stepping into this. I mean, wicked is very like, is a machine that especially here has been running for like 16 years. So yeah. every the way they teach it is very like you stand here on this number of the stage and, and you, you turn here at this line. So it's very <laughs> like that. But at the same time, I, I knew I was a very untraditional casting for the role. At least I felt that way. Um, so I was like, I'm never going to be like this guy and this guy and this guy. I'm always going to be just myself. Yeah. So I feel like I've really brought something a little bit different to the role in just me, like just being myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I never felt pressured. I was just like, I'm just going to do me. And then. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the best feeling when you feel like. Yeah. hundred percent. You're reinventing something for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And then, how how was the process uh, with Anne Juliet? Was there a lot of figuring out? Like, was it collaborative between the cast and creatives? How was your rehearsal process with it? Anne Juliet is a very it was a very different experience to Wicked because it it's a fresh show, it's a new show. The creative team were a lot um, were a lot younger and I guess forward thinking and it's very much a woke show so yeah. everything was very like organic um uh the choreography was very hard for me to pick up because it's like very hip-hop influenced and I was like I'm not a hip-hop dancer um but yeah it was a very nice experience like especially like learning Romeo because they were very like I was used to being told okay stand on zero go to one say this line but here they were like it was very much like kind of like whatever takes you you know it's very very yeah. cool like that Nice. Cool. Uh, all right. So backtracking to your 18, you book your cruise show. Mm -hmm. How long? Six months? One year? How long was the cruise? I guess that was like nine to 10 months. Yeah. Okay. And you like being out on the water that long? It's not for everyone. At, back then I was like, this is amazing. It was like, I was away from home. This, this, this was like my college, like going away for the first time. Like I mm -hmm. loved it. Um, and then I subsequently did a few more. And as I would go back to them, I'd be like, this is so restricting. This isn't really for me, but the money you earn is, is great. Yeah. And you're traveling. I think it's really cool if like, it's your first job, um, and you have nothing to compare it to, but now I couldn't think of anything worse to go back to a cruise ship, <laughs> but sure. yeah. Um, yeah. what were like a couple of your favorite places that y'all visited, um, with the cruise that you got to see? Like a country, a city. Uh... I think uh, there's an island that's just off of like Australia. It's called like, Isle of Pines, and it was like when I thought of paradise, this was like this was it. Bora Bora was really cool as well. And would you, let's say, like you hang up acting, would you stay in London or would you go to one of these types of places? <clears throat> no, I I think I hate being like far apart far away from people i think it's too you know what i mean like i need yeah. to be are, connected to people are you originally from london where are you originally from yeah so i'm from a place called kent which is like an hour and a half from london mm -hmm. um so yeah so i'm not too far it would be the equivalent of like if you were from jersey you know what i mean yeah Perfect. like it's on the shore it's on the shore so <laughs> <laughs> i see you trying to sprinkle that accent. yeah 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 yeah, one thing I noticed in London was that compared to New York, New Yorkers, like Broadway people, whatever, they're pretty much like in the city area, the boroughs, or maybe just on the outskirt of Jersey. But the more I was chatting with people from London, some were commuting from like 60 minutes or more away. Is that something normal within the industry, you think? Or was I just kind of coincidence? Uh, yeah. Sorry, one sec. Yeah, um, there are um, a lot of people do have like live further away. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's kind of, 
I wouldn't say a lot of people do. A lot of people live maybe like 30 minutes away. Okay. Maybe it's just because your tube is so much more reliable than our subway over here. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I was very impressed by your public transportation in uh, comparison to New York. Yeah. Um, our tube system is great, actually. Yeah. So with coming off of the, the ship when you're younger, when, mm -hmm. when did you get like your first – uh, professional stage gig and was that overwhelming for you or did you feel ready after what you experienced when you're you know on the boat I think I always mm, I think it might have been Aladdin actually that was my first sort of like musical um, and I had seen the show previously and when I got it I was like okay cool I think everything that's coming to my life I've always kind of just like um, I don't know. It didn't like shock me. I was just like excited mm. that I, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was kind of ready right. for it. Yeah. Okay. Let's then, let's then rewind and zoom in either about like you growing up or you meeting someone like somewhere along the way, this mindset of yours was uh, implemented, you know, like uh, rubbed off on you. Was that a family member? Did you have a mentor? Like who gave you that confidence of just like, Hey, you are, equipped you're able mm. whatever comes your way like yeah you can do it I th definitely my dad my dad um always just kind of and my and my mom really they i've always been encouraged um from a young age that i could you know whatever i wanted to do i could do it you know what i mean yeah. and i think that is so important in like every i mean you're a trainer right you're a, you're a personal trainer and i think it's you can probably see your clients like if you believe that you can achieve a goal and that's you're already halfway there. You know what I mean? Yeah, more than halfway. The more, yeah. the, the longer yeah. I, the longer I do this, the 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 less I concentrate or focus with people about the actual exercise or nutrition. It's more about the mindset because hundred percent. Wherever your mind is, the body will follow. But if your mm -hmm. mind is, is not uh, in line with what we're trying to do, then it's all for naught for sure. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. How do you, how do you stay uh, mentally sharp or mentally healthy? Uh, do you rely on exercise, meditation, friends? What do you rely on to keep yourself like grounded? Well, grounded. Uh, well, I think I know I'm always in a better mood when I worked out a hundred percent. And if I haven't worked out in a week or whatever, and I, I do work out, I'm like, oh, my God, why did I not work out? Like, it, I feel so much better. Um, right. And also, I, um, it's so easy, especially on like a West End or Broadway schedule, to kind of just like do your show, go home. And I feel like if I do that for extended periods of time, I'm like, no, I need to see people. Like, I have to stay connected and and keep the conversation going. So I think that that's really important. And it's, it can be so easy, easily neglected, you know what I mean? In the, in our busy schedules, all of us. Yeah. So definitely that exercise and, and staying in touch with people hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, I bring that up a lot with the fitness side of things, like being in a show, like, Hey, you think you're moving or you think you're working out or you think you're, um, keeping the, the body sharp, but in reality, you're doing the same repetitive show day in and day, day out and you need mm -hmm. to train the body to mix it up, to be durable, to be better than your mm -hmm. show. But it's the same mm -hmm. thing with what you just said with like the social aspect and the interacting as a normal human, you are with people and you're talking, but it's all within like the confinement of how the, the show operates. You know, you have mm -hmm. two to five minutes backstage before this scene or you have your normal pre-show chat or after the show, but again, it kind of runs that risk of monotony and getting into, a, yeah. I don't want to say a lifeless habit, but like you're, it's not new. It's, it's, it's something that the, the brain is just becoming neutralized to. Yeah. It's literally, you literally nailed it as well. And I feel like, especially in a show, because you have like, you know, two seconds, in this moment between this song and then another moment the conversations kind of like uh, have an expiration yeah like you know you can have this conversation and say this meaning meaningless whatever for like 60 seconds like okay gotta go i'm like right. you know what i mean it's like yeah very yeah. very you've 
now that, yeah. Yeah, I think you can grow with the same people in different situations, or you can grow with uh, different people in the same situations or a combination of both. I'm not sure if I just confused you and everyone listening, but like mm -hmm. if you're doing the show every day with the same people, it's kind of like the same operation, but I'm sure if you met someone at for a coffee or the gym or to go do another reading or something, there's like mm -hmm. that new, new life that, that comes with it. For mm -hmm. sure. Mm hmm. hundred percent. I love actually when you, you said reading, I love doing like a workshop. We call them workshops here. I don't know if you call them that in America. Yeah. So, yeah sometimes a workshop, sometimes reading. Yeah. I love doing those because it's like something fresh again, especially when you're on a show for like a long time, um, for like a year or two years and it's the same show every day. It's yeah. nice to go and do something for like a week, whatever. It's like something so different. And okay, you can well, use a different part of your brain again. Let's say that doesn't come up though. How in the past, when things do get redundant in your show, how have you kept life or creativity fresh? Oh, I'm really bad at that. But I, <laughs> I, I did like a panel talk with um, someone um, the other week and she is also in a, a long running show. And she said that her being in this profession, like our passion and our sort of like hobby, I guess, when we were younger, so it suddenly becomes your career. So it's so important to have something that is not related to um, singing or acting or do you know what I mean? Something yeah. else. Right. Um, so that's something that I actually have lacking in my sort of like day to day life. So I should probably like start like gardening or something. <laughs> well, let's let's workshop it right now. Let's workshop it. Anything off the top of your head, like that like for me right now it's either starting salsa lessons because mm. i'm in i'm in miami and everyone mm -hmm. i'm in miami a lot also in new york but mm. in miami salsa and bachata is just like everywhere and i'm like mm -hmm. I, I gotta learn i gotta learn and yeah. another thing is i've always loved uh watching tennis but i've never had like a proper tennis lesson so mm. I've either been thinking about salsa or tennis. All right. How about oh, you? Cool. Anything off the top okay. of your head? You're like, oh, I, I should do this. I should get around to doing this. Do you know what? I am obsessed with this TV show called The Great British Bake Off. I okay. absolutely love it. So yeah. I actually did a workshop for the, there's a new, a new musical that's just opening here in the West End, which if it, if anyone gets the chance to see it, it's amazing. So I did a workshop for that um, last year. Um, and subsequently, I started watching the TV show. So I think that uh, baking could be really fun. All right. What, <laughs> what's, your, what would, what's your first attempt going to be? Like a basic, like a cupcake, a cake, a brownie? Ooh, a I love cupcakes. I love cupcakes. Let's do cupcakes. All right. And is it going to be? With, with chocolate, chocolate um, icing on top. That's my favorite. Will it be like chocolate, chocolate, like chocolate cake with chocolate icing? Oh, yeah. Or is it... oh, yeah. All right. Double, double, mammy, baby. All right. I'm going to check in with you. I'm going to be like, hey. Play. Make... Okay. This is good. This is good. This is, you could do this by, let's, let's have it be this week sometime. Okay. I'm going to do it and I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to tag you in it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I wish I was closer so that you could send me some so I can have them. I still could. It wouldn't be good, but you could. <laughs> <laughs> I I wanted to ask you about your uh, experience with Starlight Express. Um, you're a good skater, or did you have to learn to skate once you got the once you got the role? Well, this credit on my CV is very misleading because I didn't do <laughs> so <laughs> like three years ago. Um, it, but I was still involved with Angelo Weber, so obviously Angelo Weber wrote the show, and I think about. No, it wasn't three years ago. Maybe, maybe five years ago now. It was like the thirtieth anniversary of the show, and oh. they wanted to add some new. So the show is running in Germany still, right? Um, and oh, wow. Andrew Lloyd Webber, yeah, he he wanted to add some new songs and revamp the show. So we did this like week workshop for new songs, and then we did a three a three performance, three day performance, three performances in concert of the new the new show so right. technically i did the show but i wasn't really skating <laughs> but to be fair not, not to hopefully i highlight a credit where you are skating you you have christmas on ice so were you were you skating in that 
I was not. So I was sitting <laughs> in the- <laughs> uh, I told you we'd laugh. I told you we'd have a good time. You were what? Were you a singer to like off to the side? Yeah. Or so it was like it was like a Christmas show, and it was like on a like holiday holiday on ice or whatever, you know, like that kind of thing. And then they had like some singers as well that would like we did have to walk on the ice though so i was like you want me to walk on the ice okay and then there was a few slips along the way but yeah did you fall but the sort of skaters would i must have fallen at some point i think everyone fell at one point on that show but the skaters would like skate around you and you're singing like we wish you america like (laughs) crazy stuff you better be careful with these two credits on your resume someone's going to cast you blindly in a skating play or movie or something and you're going to have to skate i know i have to think fast and learn fast (laughs) do you think (laughs) do you think you would be a better uh roller skater or roller blader you know how there's either the four wheels or the all the wheels in line what do you think 100 percent roller roller blade the wheels in line. Hundred, hundred, hundred percent. I I used to rollerblade like as a as a when I was like younger. Roller skating is harder because it's like you can't turn as as well. Yeah. You can't you know you can't be as like swift. I I'm horrible at both. So mm. either way mm. I'm, either way I'm screwed. All right, let's uh try to get a little bit more serious before I let you go. I appreciate your time. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Along the way in your journey. What was like an up and down moment where uh, things weren't all butterflies and rainbows? I asked this question for insight for our listeners. A lot of the time, mm. uh, my training with clients that listen goes hand in hand with like their you know pursuit in this really challenging career. So hearing mm-hmm. someone else's story of like, oh, it wasn't just some red carpet rolled out and it was the smoothest journey ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm so, I think I'm so grateful for all the shows I didn't get and all the no's I got. I I think there are some people who, you know, graduate from their college or whatever and go straight into a show or a leading role. And I'm so grateful for the perspective of like having the no's and having like the disappointments. Cause I think when you get a certain job or you get to a certain place it's so much more rewarding and you really appreciate it so much more so i think anytime i've, I've gotten a no it, i always say it's not uh rejection it's redirection um so i think that is so important to remember like and it helps you build resilience yeah. so yeah i mean i've gotten some really heartbreaking no's and i've gotten close to a lot of things but then i would get something else i'm like actually i'm so glad i got this instead of that yeah so i'm glad that was a no you know what i mean i love i've never heard that redirection instead of rejection that's Mm -hmm. great yeah Mm -hmm. i'm picturing my head like every time you're coming up to a yes or a no it's it's not necessarily a t in the road but it's a fork and if it's a no Mm -hmm. it's not a dead end it's just a yeah like you said yeah left or right nice all right cool Mm -hmm. yeah and here you are and if you would have had a couple of yeses when you had no's, you might not be you might not be chatting with me here today. You never know. Exactly, wearing this cool shirt, talking about chocolate cupcakes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope this thirty-three minutes and forty-five seconds was painless for you. I had, oh, a, really I had a good time. time. Yeah, I had a good time chatting with you. Um, and the last time I got to see you in London, it was great to uh, get to chat it up. So can't wait to see you again hopefully in March. So I'll be, I'll be knock, knock, knocking either on the door of the theater or wherever you're going to be at in March. So thanks so much, Carl, man, everyone round of applause for Carl. Woo. Thank you. You can follow Carl, you Carl man official Bye. on Insta. See ya. Thanks Carl. Bye. All right, everyone. That's it. I'm Joe Roscoe with bill for the stage. If you want to try a free trial, go to billforthestage.com. And we'll be on our way to a seven-day free trial where we'll work on an interactive fitness app. Don't forget, actors or athletes, train like one. Later.